Did the Mariners throw this game? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm just trolling, just angry, being a bandwagon fan all over the Mariners, just not being sweeping, and maybe I sound entitled. Well, so be it. Now, let me explain. Just hear me out. After a word from our sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal. And you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description. So take advantage, and thank you. So, yep, if you're looking to go to that Atlanta Braves game against the Seattle Mariners, use that promo code Rooftop Sports to save your $20 off so you can either boo Jared Kelnick or give him the ovation that he deserves, in my opinion, at least. Anyways, let's get into it. So the Mariners, they fall to the Arizona Diamondbacks, failing to sweep, making it 3-2. to two. Yes, the Mariners took 2 of 3, but a sweep would have been nice because it would have been a really nice cushion just in case the Mariners don't win that series against the Atlanta Braves because the Braves, they're not going to be any easier than the previous competition. This is probably going to be the toughest competition the Mariners are going to have. But let's go over it and let's summarize this game and I'll explain why I think, I personally think, my emotional self actually thought the Mariners threw this game. So first we got the first inning, Logan Gilbert with two strikeouts, Immediately, it looked like it was going to be like another George Kirby type game from the day before where he struck out, I believe he struck out 12, and it was absolutely amazing. Then Josh Brojas hit the home run in the bottom of the first, and there should have been another home run, and Jorge Polanco, he barely just missed it. And what's with the Mariners hitting these foul home runs? Like, there's like all these weird check swings and always these home runs that should be, but they always keep pulling foul. He struck out, unfortunately. And then top of the second, Christian Walker, Arizona Diamondbacks. He immediately responded with a home run to tie the game. Fortunately, though, in the in the first two innings, though, Logan Gilbert was pitching fantastic. Four strikeouts in two innings. Just absolutely insane. But at the same time, Arizona got their set of weapons. Brandon Pat, he had 11 strikeouts, just absolutely insane. And let me double check and make sure that was. Yep, 11 strikeouts to Logan Gilbert's nine. So it was pretty much a pitching duel up on that point. And then we saw Sebi Savala just striking out. And I did not like the decision to put in Sebi Savala. And honestly, he really shouldn't even be on the team anymore. But on the bright side, Leo Rivas, who made his major league debut, he hit a triple and eventually, and he got congratulations from Luis from Luis Suarez, uh, Eugenio Suarez, good vibes only. And then Julio Rodriguez drove him in with an RBI. But it gets even worse actually from here. Mariners loaded the bases with absolutely no outs. You heard that, no outs. First, Ty France hit a fly ball, a line drive that Gurriel caught. And then Mitch Garver grounded into a double play. And I did look up the statistics. The Mariners are actually 13th in the league in bases loaded situations, only batting 263. Now, let's take a look and see how they do with RBIs with the bases loaded. In RBIs. Mariners are 17th in bases loaded. And in strikeouts with the bases loaded, well, at least they're 17th in strikeouts, so not too bad. But they really do blow their chances really badly. Like, they really do. Like, they they blow it badly where it's just embarrassing. And in terms of, like, let me take a look at OPS... Well, they're fifth in OPS, but still, either way, two batting just 263 while other teams are doing better than that. So that was just a complete missed opportunity, and I think that really changed the complexion. And eventually, Eugenio Suarez tied the game. Yep, good vibes only to make it a 2-2 two -to -two tie because of a Jock Peterson double. It was just no way that that could have been done, and then Logan Gilbert finally got pulled, and then to... To try to help, it was Gabe Spire, who didn't even... He pitched... Why only pitch only eight pitches? 
And then I think Scott Service went with the matchup or something. Like I didn't even watch this game because hashtag don't quit your day job. But man, I got to take a look and see what is really going on. It looks like, so let's see, six, it's seven. So it was the eighth inning when they took the lead. It looks like, so Spire may have finished that inning even after that tie. And then going into the eighth inning, Scott Service pulled Gabe Spire. It's like, why? That makes absolutely no sense. It makes no sense. You only pitched eight pitches and you pulled him out after he got you out of that inning? It made no sense. I mean, let me check the highlights really quick. I, I got to see this because this is really bothering me. I got to take a look at this. It was unfortunately right after Gabe Spire just finished, the up, finished up the seventh inning, he pulls, he pulls him for Trent Thornton. Yes, Trent Thornton is good. Don't get me wrong. You trust him. But when you only have eight pitches on Spire, use him. Don't just now you just burned up your bullpen. Like you could have had Gabe Spire finish up the eighth inning. But no. And that's why the Mariners lost. Yes, other than the bulp other than the fact that the offense was absolutely terrible, but so was that decision making by Scott Service. And of course the Mariners did lose that game. Now, let me tell you why I kind of feel like the Mariners kind of threw that game. So Mariners win the series against the Diamondbacks in impressive fashion. They've won now four series in a row. They have the lead against the Texas Rangers. Now it's a .5 game, so it, it should have been 1.5. So, And then Cal Raleigh, he was kind of just playing quite a bit. But here's the problem I have with this. That, I mean, it just felt so convenient to just completely just throw this game. Like... Knowing you know Scott Service that Sebi Savala, when he is starting, the Mariners have a really terrible record. Like if you played Sebi Savala and you put it into a 162 game setting, they are a 100 loss team. When you put in Sebi Savala, and at that point, I'm really curious why the Mariners haven't even called up Blake Hunt yet because it's really not working with Sebi Savala. Yes, he got those three hits against Colorado, but here's the thing: it's Colorado. Colorado's pretty much throwing their season because they don't really have a team, so they're just trying to rebuild, or shall I say rebuild. But no. Like, no. Like, Savala only got those three hits, and it was completely by accident because it was against a bad team. I, I think Mariners got it. They, by trade deadline, they got to find a backup catcher because Savala is just not working. He's an automatic out. He struck out two times in the game, which is absolutely pathetic. There's a reason he got pinch hit. It's just not working. And I don't think Savala should be on that team. So that's what I meant about like they threw the game because they really felt confident that two out of three is just good enough. But I would have rather finish up that series with a sweep and then save Savala for the Atlanta game because I don't expect a sweep out of Atlanta. And personally, I don't even expect a winning series against Atlanta because Atlanta is going to be a tough team. So I would have just played one more game for Cal Raleigh for this one. And then let's let him sit in like one of those few Atlanta games. But on games that you could have the opportunity to sweep, no, I would have, I would have had Cal Raleigh start and have or at least Cal Raleigh be on the DH because Mitch Garver, oh my God, he was terrible. 0 for 4. But that that's all I got to say. Like Two of the key reasons why the Mariners lost. Scott Service pulled Gabe Spire too early. I was fine pulling Gilbert. I mean, you did the right, you did the right job there. You did the right thing there. But the problem is, you pulled Gabe Spire when he got you out of the inning leading the Trent Thornton to ruin it. So I don't even blame Trent Thornton. I just blame it on Scott Service making these bad decisions. And yes, of course, the offense is terrible, but that was also set up by Scott Service with not exactly a great lineup. Like, you can't really trust Ty France to be your cleanup guy. I would have maybe put like... I mean, who else would have I put in? I mean, it wasn't really an ideal lineup to begin with, but maybe just change things around... Maybe Luke Rayleigh at cleanup hitter or something like that. 
or Jorge Polanco, but it wasn't really an ideal lineup to begin with. But that's all I'm going to say. I know I kind of sound off the rails a little bit. I really just wanted that sweep. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and go Mariners. And thank you for dealing with my antics on this video. Now, to get a reflection of this entire series, here are the last two videos on the Mariners and the good vibes only Arizona Diamondbacks. And thank you.